Ho, 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 and welcome to the joy of editing with Dave Kelly. Hey, everyone. I hope everyone's doing great out there. Today, I thought we'd use Topaz Studio 2, my creative toolbox, and hopefully yours to make a Santa Claus painting today, maybe to lift your spirits up. You know, we're living through some dark times right now, but I thought I'd do something to maybe boost us and bring our morale up. And let's do a Santa Claus painting today. I'm going to show you some tips and tricks in Photoshop as well as Topaz Studio 2. So this is going to be a lot of fun today. And I also want to remind you, yes, the Topaz Holiday promo is going on right now. You know, 30% off all their software bundles and software upgrades. Plus, you can save an additional 15% when you use my promo code, David Kelly at checkout. And this helps my channel. It helps me to grow, helps me to keep these tutorials coming your way. And I really appreciate it. And now, without any further ado, let's go to the land of St. Nick, the North Pole. Here we go. All right, everyone, I'm starting out in Photoshop. I duplicated the background layer, called it TS2, Topaz Studio 2 Creative Toolbox. And I found this really cool image of St. Nick on a stock photo site. I'm going to link this in the description below so you can follow along with me. And you know what? Every year I'm looking for a Santa Claus that will work. And this year I finally found one. Last year I couldn't. So all I need to do at this point is come up here to filter. And we're going to go ahead and launch Topaz Studio 2. And we'll get started. All right. The first thing I want to do is go to add filter and go down into the uh, stylistic section, or I wish they would have called this one the uh, creative section. This section here is called creative, and it has some cool stuff in it like edge exposure, blur, film grain, quad tones, text, things like that. But I think uh, stylistic should be called creative, but that's my take on it. What do you think? Let me know in the comments section below, because to me, this is the creative section. Uh, now, our three top creative filters here are abstraction, the abstraction filter to simplify the image, and I've done videos on that in the past, the AI remix where it uh, reinterprets your image to like kind of uh, paintings like a Van Gogh or something like that. You know, it'll remap your image to that. And that's pretty cool. I'll do some tutorials on that. And um, the impression filter right here. This is what we're going to use today. So let me go ahead and click impression filter. And right away, we have a painting, but we are not done yet. Let's have some fun. I'm going to keep it simple. Uh, I think I'm going to use a stroke type one. Now you can click through these different strokes and see what they look like. There's all kind of different strokes, you know, different strokes <laughs> for different folks. I don't know. I'm still, I feel silly today. I feel happy. I guess it's Christmas time, but I'm going to use type one, but play with all the different strokes and then play with your number of strokes, like a low number of strokes. Think more like an abstract medium, a little less abstract and high, more of a detailed look on your image. Okay, so you have the different interpretations. I think I'm going to stick with medium today because I want some details showing through on old Santa Claus today. And we can play with our brush size. But before I do that, I think what I'm going to do is pull up my paint opacity. So see that? You can see that paint showing through. And already I'm really, really liking this image so far. That's looking really cool. We could play with our brush size, like make it, make the strokes bigger. And see, it's getting more abstract, so that's too much. We can make them less, and and you'll notice the canvas starts showing through there. I've showed you in videos in the past how you can get rid of those lines, but all you need to do, and I'll show you real quick, is come down to texture and keep dragging this down and see where it says solid, background type solid, click on original, and then the original shows through. So that's pretty cool. But for now, I don't want my brush that small. I think I want to leave it right in the center, so I'm going to double click brush size. Yeah, that is it. And I like where my paint opacity is. And we can play with stroke rotation and rotation variation. I'm not going to do that today. And uh, I, we can play with our stroke width. I think I like it right the way it is. But let me drag it to the right and make the strokes longer. And you can see how the, how the image takes on a different look to it, right? Or I can make the stroke shorter, like so. So play with it. I'm going to leave it right where it is. And also, well, that was the width. I think I said shorter. I meant to say less wide okay so and then we have stroke length we can make our strokes longer or we can make our strokes shorter so we have different options there but i think i like it right in the center or zero let me introduce you to the stroke color variation here man there are so many different adjustments inside of impression i really love this uh filter 
But check this out. When I pull this to the right, watch how we get some color variation in there. See that? Isn't that cool? Like in Santa's face and in the background there and on his suit and his hands. You know, now that's probably way too much. Unless you like it, you know, you might want that. But you could throw a little bit of extra color variation in there. And I think it really, really helps. I think a little bit like right around a 15. I, I think I kind of like it. I might just pull it back a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to pull it back because I tend to overdo things. So I'm going to just rain myself in right now okay and i showed you width and length and spill is cool too and if you look at his hand here if i do some spill see how it like spills out on the edges here if you don't like that extra spill on there you can pull that back so you can adjust that anywhere you like so you can take the spill off or let the spill be in there i'm just going to double click it and it'll set it back to the default position now, there's a little bit of edging around the hand here that I don't like. See that little dark area here and on this side here? I'm going to show you in Photoshop a little tip and trick how to get rid of that with a clone stamp tool. It's Because it's sometimes uh, the impression filter gives you that little edging around there. And that's something from time to time I like to get rid of. And I'll show you how to do that today. As far as the impression filter is concerned, I think I'm going to stop at this point because I'm happy with it. You know, I don't have to touch every slider. I don't have to go to color. I don't have to go to lighting. I think it looks good. And I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So let me go ahead and zoom in and look at Santa. His face is really cool. I like it. I'm happy with it. So here's what I like to do a lot of times when I'm using the impression filter. I'm going to go to add filter and I like to add precision contrast, precision detail. I'm going to add precision detail first. And let's zoom in a little bit here and let me go with, uh, and here we can work with overall small detail, medium and large detail. We can work in shadows and highlights. I'm just going to work in overall today, but I have other videos where I'm working in shadows and highlights as well. But hey, I don't want to overdo it on these videos because I can overwhelm you with these things. So I'm just going to use what this image needs today. So I'm going to do some overall small details. It's looking for smaller areas of detail and it's going to add some extra detail to it. Look how it brings out the whiskers in his beard and his coat and his hand and some of the things in the background. Now, if you go too far, it's going to look over the top and you may want that look. So stop where you think it looks good. You're the artist here. I can't tell you what to do. All I want to do is show you how these tools work. I'm going to use my interpretation here on the adjustments. Now here's medium. It's looking for larger areas of detail. Not super large, but larger areas. So I'm going to go with a little bit of medium. And a little goes a long way in these things. And let's try the overall large detail. Let's start to pull it up. Yeah, that's cool. I kind of like what's, what's happening to the suit. But I think that's way too much. I'm going to pull that back. Yeah, maybe around a, around a 13. Yeah, somewhere around there. I think that looks good. Let me click this eye here. Toggle this off. There's the before and there's the after. But see how that detail just starts to pop. And then I'll just add a little bit of precision contrast. Now, this is going to work in micro areas of contrast. Think of sharpening. It's looking for very small areas of, of, of contrast, but it'll tend to sharpen the image, okay? I don't want to mess with the micro today. I might mess with the low just a little bit. It's going to add contrast to the low areas. See that? I can go crazy there. But hey, if I was doing like a black and white sketch look, I may want to really pull that up. But Precision Contrast works really great with these creative type filters like the Impression Filter. So let me give it a little bit of low. Let's play with the medium. Oh, yeah. I like that. It's, it's adding some character to old Saint Nick. So I'm going to go with a little bit of medium. And let's try high. Yeah, maybe just a little bit of high. Not too much. But see like these darker areas, how they're really starting to get really dark. Or if they're getting way too dark, I can open them up by moving this to the left. Kind of works like a um, like a shadow control. So, so you can open up the shadows or close them down. So I'm just going to give it a little bit of that. And you also have lighting in here. You have color. You can work with color. But you know what? I think I'm happy and I think I'm done. And if you're happy and you think you are done, and make sure you are done. And if you are, click Accept. And when you do, that'll save it out and send you right back into Photoshop. Now I'm going to show you how to take care of the little overshoots that the painting did like on the hand here. Areas that you don't like. First thing I want to do is create a new layer. So click on this icon here. It creates a new pixel layer, a blank pixel layer. And get your uh, clone stamp tool. 
You can type S or just click on clone stamp here. Make sure sample all layers is uh, selected here. In this drop down, you have these choices current, current, and below, and all layers. Choose all layers. And then hold our option or alt key down, find a sampling point, which is close to the edge here. So I'm just going to sample like right about here. And I'm just going to paint. I have a nice soft edge of my clone stamp tool. I'm just going to paint up like so and get rid of that fringing, even right here. I'll get rid of that fringing right there. And on this side, if you want to get rid of it, you can do this. Just sample an area and come in here and take it out. And this area right here, which doesn't look bad, I'm going to get, I'll get rid of it anyway, just, just to show you how it can, how it can be done. Because like I said, a lot of times when you're painting, you'll get some fringing on the edges and you don't want them, you can get rid of them. And even this little light up here, if I want to get rid of it, I could use the healing brush, spot healing brush, or I'll just use a stamp tool because I'm already on it and just paint that off. Here's a little dot right here I don't want. I'll get rid of that. But like I said, you can use the uh, healing brush or whatever you want to do. But there you go. Now I'll toggle this layer off here and you can see there's a before and there's an after. So you can just clean up some edges that, that happen. Sometimes you get that little spill out. Certain spots of the painting may look really good, but other spots you're like, nah, I don't like that there. So that's how you can get rid of it. Well, there you go. Good old St. Nick, a Santa Claus painting today. I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, please give it a like and share it with your friends. If you're not yet a subscriber to my channel, please subscribe and click that bell notification icon. And then every time I upload a new tutorial, you will be notified about it.